Live from the NJ.com studio comes the only weekly TV podcast you'll need, where a lofty critic squares off with an obsessed superfan on everything from highbrow drama to lowbrow reality. The cocktail shaker is ready. Prepare for your TV hangover. Now, your hosts, Vicki Hyman and Aaron Medley. Hello and welcome to TV Hangover. I am Erin Medley alongside the lovely Vicki Hyman who's wearing a gorgeous set of earrings. Oh, thank you. I'm not, she looks at her boobs. Like, I'm not no, talking no, was, about was, your chest. I'm sorry. I, can we just start over now? Can we? I'm sorry, I was looking down to see what I was wearing. Oh, no, it's the earrings. Okay. They're really thank cute. You. Um, maybe we'll tweet them, you know. Okay. You know how those podcasts do. Uh, we are joined today by a first-time guest. We, t- we talk about him sometimes, right? We, we've mentioned his name a few times. Have I, we? I, I think so. I'm real. <laughs> when I refer to Aaron as being my boss, she's actually my boss's boss. Mm, I'm sure he's thrilled to hear that. <laughs> he's also confused. Uh, <laughs> Chris Kelly is with us. Hey, guys. Managing producer uh, of our entertainment team here at NJ Advanced Media. He uh, is more highbrow, I'd say, than I am, and maybe a little more than Vicky. Slightly. He covers Slightly. theater. He does cover theater. And I read more sophisticated books. Uh, than me? Yes. I don't think so. Well, both we'll of you listen to the the books on tape, so I don't consider that reading. Just, oh. just saying. <laughs> all right. This is getting off to a great start. Not <laughs> awkward at all. <laughs> Let's get into some TV news. I wish we had music. I was waiting. Like, music was in my head, you know? Okay. Here's the news. Vicky's favorite shows of the season were picked up by CVS. Those shows are Bull, Kevin Can Wait, and MacGyver. I hate... No, I hated MacGyver. I really absolutely hated MacGyver. Bull is exactly what, you know, you would CBS viewers want. Um, and Kevin Can Wait isn't the worst thing I've ever seen. It's basically his uh, uh, his the, old show. What was that show called? I can't remember. A King of Queens. King it's basically of Queens. King of Queens. Yes, except with Kevin he's James. he's a retired police officer instead of a UPS delivery right. man, and he has children. So, Chris, how many of these shows have you watched? So, I haven't watched any of these, cause, but I have a good a good question. You know how George Will said the opposition to gay marriage is literally dying? Is the audience? <laughs> For CBS television literally shows, dying. literally aging yeah, out yes, and dying. It Absolutely, it is. I think, but you know what? Maybe it isn't because I feel like fifty-year-olds are getting into CBS, and they still have like another twenty-five years, hopefully. They do, and we do have like the slightly younger people watching um, uh, the Big Bang Theory, which I don't mm. think is as egregious as a lot of CBS's other shows. So I guess. Do but, you um, think we will all age into? Yes, none of us no, are yet fifty. No, we will no, age we will. into the CBS line. No, yes, no, you will. No, and I'll no. tell you why. Remember what I said about Never. Bull. It's a good show to take a nap to. And what do you do when you get older? I don't need you any take help more taking. Naps. I don't need any help taking naps. That's the beauty of me. All right. I'm just Amazing saying. Amazing powers of sleep. That's how I'm going to get into it. I'm going to need a good nap. I'm going to need to put on some show for background noise only. I want to watch the first five minutes. Get the gist you'll, of the you'll mystery. See, you'll see who is the most hope high profile correct. star on the show. Okay, that's the villain. Wake and up move two on. minutes before it ends to see that I was correct. And, and then and then go to bed for the night. Yeah, Right. I mean, it's it makes sense. Um, also, some other pickups for... For uh, this season, you know, full season order of Designated Survivor. Expected. Which we're both sort of like, eh, mm-hmm. about. Uh, Speechless. Yes. Which you really Very love. about, yes. Very good show. Um, and Fox ordered five additional episodes of Lethal Weapon. Okay. Which I'm like, all right, that's all right. fine. Um, and then, uh, let's see. Oh, no, I feel like there was some other news here. One of the other shows that we... Oh, This Is Us. Oh. Five additional episodes uh, were really picked up. only five. Yeah, That's but I think that may have brought it to a full season order. Okay. I don't know how many there were originally. Um, and there's a full season order on sophomore comedy Superstore, which I have not watched since it premiered. I, have, I haven't watched since the, the season first one. season. Yeah. yeah. When they pick these things up for like half a season or just six episodes, what are they doing there? Is it like we kind of like it, or we kind of think it's going to fail, but we we like you enough to keep going on? I think it can be both. Yeah, I think it can be both. I think for This Is Us, um, people love that show, and it has good ratings. So yeah. I, I think maybe the original order was for 
maybe 18 and now it's yeah. 23 I mean, sometimes they get like 12 or 18 and they start cutting back and that's when you have to right. worry. That's when you got to worry. Like yeah. pitch. I mean, they haven't cut back they yet. They haven't cut back pitch, but. but oh, here. <laughs> Not news. I'm back in for pitch. You're back in for pitch. I'm what back did pitch in. do? I watched the episode last week. You told me to week. stop watching. I did. I came very close to deleting it on my DVR last night, but I, I didn't. Know. I watched the episode last week, and it's still very much like, oh, there's a woman playing baseball, and you know, she the part of the central storyline was um, she dated another baseball player. Yeah. Um, before they both made it to the big leagues and then they did make it to the big leagues and she's pitching against him and then they have like this huge fight in the middle of the field where she like <laughs> chest bumps him or something ridiculous <laughs> and then it causes like a bench clearing brawl and everyone's fighting and it's so silly was, I'm sorry, that I'm now enjoying that you, it. That's the episode that this you This is liked. the one that brought me back okay. in. Okay, all right. Brought all me right. back in. So silly, I liked it. Okay, so here's some more news and I, I can't wait to hear your thoughts. So season three of American Crime Story. So season one was O.J. Oh, yes. Simpson, mm-hmm. right? Season two is going to focus on Katrina, mm-hmm. which I don't get. And then season three, Gianni Versace. It was a fascinating story. Oh, I was very into yeah. that. And it has a New Jersey angle because um, Andrew Cunanan, Cunanan um, actually killed that, um, I think, cemetery uh, crypt keeper or whatever in New Jersey before he – I don't know if it was before or after – but yeah, New Jersey angle. Sorry. Jer- <laughs> so for those of you guys who don't remember, uh, Gianni Versace of the House of Versace uh, was murdered by Andrew Cunanan. And before Andrew Cunanan was captured, he committed suicide. Mm-hmm. And this happened. How long ago was that? Oh, and they God. had been boyfriends? Oh, no, it's no. Unclear. He was just obsessed. I, th- I thought was he was just think- obsessed with Gianni Versace. I don't think they ever found out like the actual motive. Well, that's why we need a TV show to yeah. tell I guess. us. Well, this happened in uh, July of 1997. Mm-hmm. Who, so have, they have not yet announced casting. No, but you know Sarah Paulson's going to be in it, right? Yeah, probably. I mean. Vicky, who would be your dream Gianni Versace? <laughs> Gianni Versace, God. Oh, that's a hard one. Um, Michael Douglas. Actually, that would be a good one. He has one, that right? like nice flowing locks. Yes. He w- actually would be a good one. And he might want to do it. I mean, John Travolta you know, was in the first one. That's actually a very good call. Yes. What about Donatella? Because you know she's going to oh be somebody gosh, from Saturday Night Live. Hot mess. Who, who is the um, the the Maya Maya Rudolph? Maya Rudolph. Maya Rudolph. No, she's a that great would be too, co- too comical. <laughs> I don't think it's a comedy. Um, so these series will fill concurrently in early 2017, and then Katrina will air in 2017, and I think this Versace one will air in 2018. But the eh. Katrina one is about Hurricane Katrina. Yes. Yes. What, is oh. there another Katrina? <laughs> Who's playing the hurricane? <laughs> Don't. Know. I'm wondering if it has to do with Kanye. Um, um, uh, <laughs> you guys know I, I work for the Times Pick You, and I left before Katrina, though, so I did follow it very closely. Mm-hmm. And um, there is, I think, a lot of interesting elements that they could delve into there. One of them is the standoff where you had um, the Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office, I think it was, um, like basically holding black all the holding back oh, all the black. Freudian slip. Sorry, holding you know, back like black all people. the black. Bl- Oh my God, Aaron! It's been a long Holding time since back, I brought that up, right? All That's the a throwback. Um, black people who are trying to flee um, New Orleans into the mostly white um, uh, West Bank of of Jefferson Parish. But like, so. how do you pick specific characters to focus on for ten episodes, or do you not? Know. Do you see like different people every? Episode. I don't know. I'm just curious it to could, see it how they could they're go for the mosaic that. kind of thing because there are so many stories, right? And who's going to play George Bush? Um, I'm just saying. Okay. No one? I mean, who would? Or Brownie. Who's that? Oh, Heck of a job, Brownie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Michael yeah. Brown. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll see uh, how these go over. Uh, our last bit is sort of news and a topic that I wanted to discuss because we talked about this last week. We finally know the resolution of the Billy Bush saga over at the Today really Show. Really to no surprise. How could he come back? I mean, he was fired. Yes. Or they negotiated an exit an exit plan. Yes. Uh, so, Chris, what are your thoughts on the whole Billy Bush uh, Trump tapes and, and the fallout? Oh Well, first of all, I wish I had a job where if I did something egregiously offensive, I got $10 million to go away. doesn't work <laughs> like that all? here. No, you I'll do the egregiously offensive things and you get and to keep I, your job. I, yeah, I get to I don't stay get it. here. <laughs> That's true. Um, I think Billy Bush was, as you guys just mentioned, <clears throat> excuse me, kaput from the moment this video leaked. There's no way you can recover from that. 
I don't think there was a way to recover from that, even if Nancy O'Dell wasn't his co-star. The mm-hmm. fact that he was talking about a co-star right. was doubly offensive. I actually think Billy Bush has gotten a little bit off the hook in this circumstance. Really? All the focus has been on Donald Trump. The thing that creeps me out about that video oh, let's see if Chris is with us. when they're getting off the bus, bus yes. and Billy Bush basically sets up like a makeshift sexual yes. assault. That is the worst part of the yes. entire video, right? And he the, says, the hug enabler. Yes. He was the hug enabler. And then, I mean, words that will haunt my dreams forever is... How about one for the for bushy? The bushy. Oh, <laughs> for the bushy. Oh. <laughs> Just for that, for for referring to yourself in the third person as bushy, he should be fired on camera on to ca- another person, I, like I, in public. I, I think the real the real interesting thing here is: does he ever work again in yes, television? Yes, absolutely. Is he going to be rehabilitated? I'm sorry. Have we forgotten how um, our Jersey guy, uh, uh, what the hell is his name? The one who lied about many things. Night with oh, Brian, Brian Williams. Williams. <laughs> I mean, he got a job again. He went away for like what six months, and then but he's when back on the air. When your whole brand is built on a kind of all-American innocuousness, which I think is sort of what Billy Bush has always represented. Well, is innocuousness frat boyish? Because he's always seemed like over the he's top. A, well, he fratty. is a Bush. You know, I was wondering if he had stayed with Access Hollywood, do you think that his his career would have been torpedoed as much as if he had I mean, he moved over to Today's Show, where there's a mm-hmm. slightly different demographic? I think it's not not no, I think different. it's pretty. This I think it's pretty much the same mm. because he was hosting Access Hollywood Live, which is the midday show, and then the regular Access Hollywood, and I think both are pretty are watched pretty much by women. But it's like the entire Access Hollywood brand is Hollywood entertainment, pretty much. Whereas right. today, it's like kind of a larger brand that's got some seriousness to it, even if it's not in the hour that he hosts. Right. Today's take. Today, the yeah. Third I just, hour. I'm just wondering if, if it would have been as bad if he had stuck with Access Hollywood because he just moved over like two I months ago. I think he would have still been fired. Don't you love how even when the tr- Today Show tries to avoid backstage drama, it's like they get yeah. sucked right back in. It's they are not, they're incapable. You, you know, this, that's one of my favorite yes, topics. Of course. Like, I I love all of the, the behind the scenes drama only at the Today Show because it's just so good and ridiculous. Like the number of rumors. Remember the whole Ann Curry debacle? Oh, yes. And then Savannah Guthrie got the position. And now the rumors are that Natalie Morales had to move to LA because the women there didn't like her or she had an affair with Matt Lauer. It's what? like, what? Is this the first you're hearing? Just of this? an affair. Rumor. Rumor. No, no, no. I said that. <laughs> I said it out with rumor. No, these are all the behind the scenes. <laughs> Rumors, and then the other rumor is that no one really liked Billy Bush anyway. I so think it's it was, I think it must be a fact. <laughs> so it was easy for him to be let go. Um, I love it. I think this was the right the right outcome. And a lot of people are saying like, "Oh, it's unfair that Billy Bush got fired, but Donald Trump can still run for president." I think those are people who don't understand how things work. Right, and, and it's not like <laughs> it, I'm sorry, but it's not like Donald Trump is going to win the presidency at this point. So. Vicky's prediction. <laughs> yeah. We'll see if she's Along right. With everybody else. <laughs> we'll, we'll have an episode the day after Election Day, so we'll, we'll, be able to, we'll be able to reward you. All right, so let's move into uh, the real reason Chris is here. Uh, premiering this week, I believe Thursday, on PBS is Hamilton's America, uh, which is a documentary that sort of follows the makings of uh, Hamilton, the musical on Broadway. Um did I say it's airing on PBS? I said that, right? Yes. Yes. So we've all watched the screener. We've all watched the screener, and Chris and I have both watched the show. And you have tickets in 2027, I feel like I think. that's a dig. What? Well, <laughs> not, every, not everybody could see Hamilton with the original cast. And it's okay. Yes, turn it's okay. it. I'm sure, I'm sure you'll it, like it. With, um, turn it. With, um, I think Emmanuel Lewis is yes. playing Hamilton. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, you guys are so funny. You're so you much quicker what? than I am. It's fine. I have my tickets for 2017. Thank you, February and April. Aaron's waiting for the, the high on. school, <laughs> the New Hampshire high school all white version. I'm gonna see it in Boise. Um, whatever. So they've seen the musical, the stage musical, and and we've all seen the documentary. Vicky, Chris, and I have already spoken about this, and we'll give our opinions. But I, I want to hear what did you think about the PBS documentary? I thought it was kind of dull. Why? Um. 
One thing that I did like is that um, they showed a lot of snippets from the performance, which is very hard to see. Like, every once in a while, something surfaces on YouTube. Right. And, I mean, the show is everything that people say it is. It is such an amazing piece of theater that even just to see little snippets of it Mm -hmm. is so exciting. And I just feel like they took a very staid basic way of presenting the documentary that kind of sucked a lot of the life out of it. Mm -hmm. If you've read the Hamilton book, which I have, there's nothing new for you there. Um, So the only thing for existing fans is these little snippets they get to relive of of the the show. Um, And, you know, for people who haven't seen it, you know, okay, you get to learn more about Hamilton and they take you... I'm not not saying that, you know, people aren't saying interesting things. It just felt like a very dull treatment of it. So, you know, besides today's show drama, the other thing I really enjoy... um, or is watching documentaries. Mm-hmm. I watch a lot of documentaries. Uh, so I would say I'm a documentary expert. Okay. And this one was kind of boring. Thank you. Oh. It was, so it seemed very PBS to me. Mm-hmm. I don't watch a lot of PBS documentaries, but um, I don't, so I don't know if this is in the vein with other PBS documentaries, but it started out where I thought, okay, you know, they started shooting this before Hamilton mm-hmm. premiered, like when he, when Lynn Manuel was still writing the show. And I'm like, okay, this is a real behind the scenes. You get 40 minutes into the what is an hour and a half without commercials. And there's no there are no commercials on PBS, so I assume it's an hour and a half. A documentary, you get 40 minutes in, and all that's done. Like, the behind the scenes is over. And then you start getting into the history of Ham- Alexander Hamilton. And I'm like, I, nope, don't need it. And the most interesting thing, I think, is about, like, you know, the use of hip-hop, which they had, like, a segment on. But I think that could have been a lot more interesting. Mm-hmm. And probably... I don't understand like a lot of the references that they that they talk about. And like there's one there's one person who is who had seen the show like ten times, took him ten times to see like all the Oh, Questlove. Yeah, all the, the hip hop references. And I certainly don't get very many of them, so I would have appreciated a documentary just about hip hop at Hamilton. Mm. I didn't really need to know about like, you know, all the history behind it. Right. And, you know, going to the Princeton Cemetery. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm pretty much with you guys. This was a big disappointment. I think it kinda got caught betwixt and between. It's trying to appeal both to Hamilton fans, of which there are a legion, and also sort of to people who have never seen Hamilton and just watch PBS and have been living under a rock forever. (laughs) So it kind of has these very, what I thought were very interesting, sort of how the sausage got made sequences where you actually get some insight into the creation of the musical. There's a wonderful shot where you get to see Lin-Manuel's notebook and it has all Mm -hmm. these rhymes and, Mm -hmm. and all these scribblings. Um, there's a great sequence where you see Lynn Manuel with director Thomas Kale and Alex Lacamoire, who did the orchestrations, and them working through one of the songs. I think anybody who's seen this show wants more of that. Correct. Like, I really like the part where Lynn Manuel's writing um, the song uh, My Shot, mm-hmm. and he is saying, and then, you know, Lafayette says this, and, and Hamilton says mm-hmm. that, and then they show the juxtaposition, they show, like, what happens in the actual stage version, and he's like, and then I'm gonna write what Burr says, and then, they, like, I really enjoyed those scenes where you see his process, and then you see how that translated to the stage. But like I said, after forty minutes, that was done, and then we started getting tours of museums mm-hmm. and talking yeah. about. I like I didn't. Need and that. that's where I think they were trying to appeal to sort of maybe someone who doesn't isn't interested in musical theater, but is kind of a PBS viewer who's interested in history. But who really wants to watch Philip Asu and Renee Goldsberry go to the Schuyler House? Like it, it's just so it's sort of esoteric. It's right and, and doesn't really connect in any way to the show. Yeah, sure, there are real-life sites, but that would be a documentary about see the real-life sites of Hamilton. Show me a documentary about how this completely groundbreaking show that's changed everything was put together. And I actually think they undersell the show. That's oh the great irony The choreography, of it. which is yes. very interesting. Yeah. More about the costumes. the costumes. I mean, like, anything. 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 <laughs> yeah. um, and, and also the, the scenes where they went to different... Uh, they went to the cemetery. They went to the house. It just felt very staged. And you see, like, at one point... Um, 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 uh, Lynn Manuel Miranda and um, Leslie, um, please help Odom me out. Odom Jr. Thank you, mm-hmm. Leslie Odom Jr. Like reading um, the letters back oh, and right. forth, and it's like, well, you know, this, and they're acting all excited. It's like, well, I know you're acting because I'm sure you've Correct. read these before like ten million times. Yes. So. Or when um, the young, the guy who plays Hamilton's son, whose last name is Ramos, I believe, I can't okay. remember his first name, and then the the guy who's on Bull, 
<laughs> who plays George Washington? Oh yes, yes. Um, Christopher Chris Jackson. Jackson. Yes, Chris Jackson. They mm-hmm. go somewhere and they see the room where you know, I guess it was George Washington and Martha mm-hmm. Washington slept, and it was like that felt ex- like really staged. Yeah, it's like, like field like, trips with the cast. Yeah, of correct. I did. I didn't need that at all. Um, also, some random things, <laughs> random thoughts. I took notes. You know, I never take notes. Uh, Jimmy Fallon. Necessary yes, why. thank you. Thank you. Like, what? when it first showed up in the beginning, I was like, I thought it was cool that they had George Bush and Bar- right. Barack Obama, but Elizabeth I was like, Warren. I don't need to see Jimmy, Jimmy Fallon. Fallon stood out. Like, Quest Love makes sense. Mm-hmm. You know, he's a rapper. He was talking about the rapping aspect and all that, but like, Jimmy he also Fallon. Did the soundtrack, like, too, right? I think it was, it was like oh, Jimmy okay. Fallon bragging for being an early adopter. Like, yeah. I saw it at the public when I was in previews. You know, yeah. it was a little bit, uh, wow, you're great. Jimmy I thought Fallon. that was random. Um, also, Lemon Wells' father makes an appearance early yeah. on. I think they're like the same person. <laughs> I love his dad, but there's they, a time travel element. You're saying totally, that? they have the same hand gestures. The they speak in the same way. The hair, well, the hair when uh, Lin Manuel was playing Hamilton. I thought that was so cute. I really mm-hmm. enjoyed that and like hearing his father's story. Oh, yeah, I love Lin Manuel Miranda saying at the beginning, like I'm basically telling my own father's yes. story, which you know. I liked. I like more personal stuff, Lynn, please. Right. Oh, yeah. that's what I said to Chris. There's a part, we're just giving away the documentary, but you guys should still watch it if you're interested. Really? Uh, well, it ends with Hamilton being a big hit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Surprise. Surprise alert. Um, I was telling Chris there's a part in the documentary where Len Manuel is talking about how he and his wife had bought a new apartment and they were renovating it. And I'm like, can you just show me half an hour of that? Yeah. Like, I want to see the before and after. I want to see the who do they hire to design, like do the construction work because that would like his countertops you know? more interesting <laughs> than the rest of that documentary. I, I will say, if, if for fans of Hamilton, you've probably gotten a lot more out of the various 60 minute segments, the CBS Sunday this Sunday morning segment, which did interview both. Lynn Manuel Miranda and his dad. Uh, so that was the real shock here. There, there's been so much written about it, said about it. What's this going to bring new to the table? Uh, field trips to the Schuyler Museum yeah, yeah. And, the, and the Burr House seem to be about it. Didn't bring much at all. So we're down on the Hamilton uh, Hamilton um, Hamilton's America documentary on PBS airing Thursday. But you can certainly watch it if you disagree. I, I, yeah, I was, I was just I was just down on it. But like I still enjoyed watching every single snippet I could. Oh, of the music. The show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you haven't seen the show, um, the the they. They perform. They show a lot of the performances, yeah. but um, nothing quite in uninterrupted. There's not a ton that's uninterrupted. There's not, but right. like even like even like you know a minute of yeah. seeing David Diggs on stage right. is worth watching an right. hour and forty right. minutes with us. And especially since pretty much all the cast now, the original cast is gone, so to get to see kind of some of these original mm-hmm. performances, I think that would have been great in the documentary is to learn more about the individual cast members and like their journeys and how they got there because like David Diggs was an unknown before Hamilton. Mm-hmm. Uh, Renee Elise Goldsberry wasn't, but her, I think her story is pretty fascinating as well. And like some of the younger cat, like there's so much they could have done in this documentary that they did not do. Um, do you, I was thinking about how hard it is to do making of documentaries that don't feel like promotional videos, you know? And the ones that I always cite, like um, Hearts of Darkness, which is about the making of Apocalypse Now. What makes that interesting is everything goes horribly wrong, you know. Mm -hmm. So how do you make a compelling making of documentary about a show which is a huge success that doesn't just feel to me, as this did, like come see how, you know, a promotion. You know, I'm going to go total highbrow here. I know Chris has seen this. The company, um, the making of the company soundtrack. Mm -hmm. That Mm -hmm. was like. That's one of the most iconic ones. Like so fascinating. And it's really just a lot of people working through the the complex and difficult songs on the show and I just I couldn't stop watching it I would have been happy to see that treatment here agreed yeah I mean I think that's and it's ironic because Hamilton the show and and its best song Room Where It Happens is all about how this the the lyric how this sausage gets made best song uh, one of the best songs, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and and you know the how fascinating, how process is so fascinating. The negotiation, the give and take, the back and forth, uh, that uh, that's all missing here. I mean, you get he, in glimpses. He had, he had an interview with Obama that seemed kind of like you know de facto. It's like yes. okay, it seemed like they. <laughs> so on one hand, it seems like this was all premeditated because they had footage that was shot really well, so you can tell they set it up from the beginning. But on the other hand, it also seems like they were like, oh, we have this footage. Let's throw it together into a documentary. And there was no cohesive thought or idea about what it should be. So I don't know. Whatever. Watch it. Tweet us uh, if you have an opinion at E underscore meds, at Vicky High, V-I-C-K-I-H-Y, and at 
Chris Kelly, 74. That's it. And we still love Hamilton. We just don't oh, love Oh, yeah. We love Hamilton. And we love Lin-Manuel Miranda. Okay, so another thing that we've watched. Let's not give away. Let's not spoil this one for people. The Rocky. <laughs> 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 it's the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Let's do the Time, time warp, warp again. again. Let's make sure we get that title in there. Uh, that's airing on Fox also this week. Yes. Thursday? Friday? Fr- Look, it's coming on this week. <laughs> I don't know. L- check your local listings. Uh, it stars Laverne Cox, Victoria Justice, um, Reeve Carney, who I don't know who that from is. From Entourage. Hey, oh, well, no, oh, no, 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 no. He's, he's not from Entourage. He was he? the original Spider-Man, and he was in Penny Dreadful. Quite a good actor. Very good singer. There, what original Spider-Man? On Broadway. Turn off the Oh, back. oh, on Broadway. Okay. And, uh... Ryan McCartan. Yeah, he's a mystery to me. Who plays Brad? I could not even be. I could not even like like get off the couch to like look up. Who I don't he even was. know who that is. Um, and also Adam Lambert, who we all know, Ben Vereen, Christina Milian. So those are names that you may recognize. And from and the Annalie, original film, and Annalie Ashford. Oh, Tim too. Curry. Sorry, and Annalie Ashford. Who's and a Tony Annalie winner? Ashford who was actually like one of the high points of the musical for me. All right, so snap judgments <laughs> quickly. Just, like, first thought that comes to your mind. Why? <laughs> My mind would be no. Okay. Well, I haven't seen the whole thing yet, but what I watched was not as bad as you guys That's said. That's because he Chris didn't saw watch two, as much as Aaron minutes. saw, who didn't see as much as, as I saw, saw, which is the whole damn Vicky thing. Vicky watched the entire thing. I watched, like, a good, maybe an hour, Vicky. I think I watched at least an hour. Um, and there are so many problems with this musical remake. First of all. It's not live. It's not live. Which okay. is how we watched and it. And second of all, it's a reimagining that isn't really a reimagining. Correct. Um, I just like to give a little bit of history of the, rec- the recent live musical. So you had The Sound of Music, which had, you know, the novelty going for it, even if it was not very good. Peter Pan was also not very good, but at least staging, it was very interesting. They did that round stage, mm-hmm. liked it very much. Then you had The Wiz, which um, benefited so much from amazing performances. Right. Um, and I think it's also material that, like, some people know really Really well, and some people do not know very well. I think right. it introduced it to a new audience. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Greece is the which Fox also did was the one that really um, benefited from like being live and having. Um, I mean, it changed the game. I it mean, it changed the game. You know, like, but it was it was the one that had the most like sort of audience interaction, and it just fed off the audience's energy so incredibly well. And then this one, which I think actually would have done better if it was live, because it was just it seemed very dead. It was so dry. It was it, just. But here's the thing: uh, it was dry, yet it's the Rocky Horror Picture Show, which is not dry at all, not dry material. No. And so I. <coughs> I, it was definitely one of those, like, why did you make a remake of this? This was completely unnecessary. It felt like an episode of Glee. Like, a, like mm. with, like, real... I mean, I don't know if Glee ever did Rocky Horror. I have some, I, I maybe they did. But it's, like, it's like really good production values and mm-hmm. kind of slick, but just... They didn't not add anything to, to well, it at all. Well, one of the things they did, which I thought was a complete blunder, is that part of the magic of Rocky Horror is the audience interaction. Anybody right. of you gone and have, have seen the show live... The whole audience interaction segment kind of covers up for the fact that the show makes abs- the, the movie makes absolutely no sense, mm-hmm. and so they did these like sort of pans to an audience, but nothing really. Cl- they didn't really say anything clever. They were responding to this to what was the action going on on the screen in the most like mundane way. But it was also because it was, it was really interesting. Movie. It's a movie within a movie. It's a, in but but right. like, not enough of it and nothing really clever about it. But they threw toilet paper at the thing and it's it like was staged. This is not. I know. Was, so that's the problem. It's like that's it's not yeah. even real. So it just felt like why are you doing this? Like I, I didn't well, understand why they were doing that at all. Okay I want to come a little bit to its defense having not oh, watched Lord. the whole thing. Okay. I will say the opening sequence which uh, is probably is, my favorite part. It is <laughs> Beautifully done, and they're mm-hmm. singing the um, the the picture. So the the title song, yeah, yeah with, which is usually done with just with, lips, with right? the right. mouth. Yeah. Yes, and so here it's this gorgeous blonde uh, with red lips. Who I was I that? I don't know who the actress was. I, I looked it up. I can't remember. Nobody. Oh. I've uh, heard lovely of presence, and she's sort of like uh, dancing through an old fashioned movie house. And the cinematography is beautiful. Mm-hmm. I looked that guy up. He's a Canadian cinematographer who's worked with Guy Madden. Really, really good looking um, opening sequence. 
Uh, so I, I was I was struck by that, and I thought, oh, you know, these songs are very fun, and maybe this is a good opportunity for for kids who didn't grow up as we all did uh, in the era of the when you saw these midnight shows of the Rocky Horror Picture Show, and here's a fun low key entry point into this show. Not going to be the major way you want to see this show, but but introducing you, and then maybe you go back and see the original movie or seek out one of the stage productions. I think without the audience interaction element, you see the show kind of for what it is, which is just like sort of a mess with some fun songs. I mean, the whole second half, which you didn't see, is just... I mean, you don't even know what the hell's going on in the second half of the show, and it just really got bogged down. I was like, oh my god, please let this end. I think, I think also we have to acknowledge, and maybe you guys will disagree, and I think, Vicky, you were alluding to this, the Rocky Horror Picture Show, the movie, is just not that good. No. It's not good. It became a cult classic, which is completely different than being an actually, like, a good movie. So, to watch this musical, it was kind of like, well, this is terrible, but the original material is also terrible, so now you just made it worse. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's sort of how I felt. I want to talk specifically Specifically about some performances. Okay. Laverne Cox, who plays uh, Frankenfooter, the scientist. And can we the role not- played by Tim yeah. Curry in the original film. Correct. I mean, I, I, I don't want to wait until like you know trans politics Please here, but it was do. no, it was it was just very strange to me because you know we have learned a lot about transgenderism and how it's not transvestitism, but actually. Um, the, 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 the source material is telling us that he's a transvestite and he, he's from transgender Transylvania, but he's not a trans. So it's like, I was just very And Laverne confused. Cox is a woman. And Laverne Cox is a woman, a trans woman. A trans woman, but a woman who's playing a man who is a transvestite woman. Yeah, I, I, it's it like, what? Well, I, I do think, though, that, you know, this movie has a real strong history with uh, gay and lesbian audiences, and particularly sort of the the how to frame this in a in a nice way the the, the sort of kids who felt like outcasts in high school mm-hmm. really rallied around this and felt connected to it, and so I appreciate the effort on the part of the producers to um, sort of reach out to a new generation and sort of engage with the conversation about transgender communities, about broader acceptance and all of those things. I don't think so it was a I conversation, though. Think, it was just accept, which is fine. It was, it was right. very, like, pro-live-your-truth kind of right. thing. I just think it's a little too dangerous. I, I think it's, it's, it's unfair and a little bit uh, unfair to both the material and to the larger cultural conversation to be too literal about, okay, she's a sweet transvestite from transsexual... Transylvania. I think that's the line. But I was wondering if are they tr- are they trying to make a statement? And I was just confused as to About what, what the statement you know, what the statement is. would be. I other agree. than other than you know there was certainly a pro, you know. Be who you want to be. I think that's the statement, and I think that's about as much as you can expect okay. out of out of this. Well, that, that's fine. Thing. And and it, outside of the politics, back to the performance. Laverne Cox was terrible in this. <laughs> per- Look, I'm sorry. I had mixed feelings. She had an accent. Yes, that went all it over the place. It was like left, right, center. I didn't know, where I it was didn't know from. what the hell was happening. Like, was she British or what? I just yeah, southern. There's, <laughs> there's also not a great singing voice there. No, which I was surprised about. I thought she. She had a theater background. She certainly has, she has presence, and she, you know, wore those costumes great. Costumes great. William Long Ivy. Well, William Ivy Long did oh, William the costumes. From Hamilton. Oh, Broadway. From, yeah. yeah. Not from Not from Hamilton. Right? No. Yeah, but like... Every, Are like, sure? He did Positive. Grease Live. That's what you're talking oh, about. But he's Grease done Live, like, he's right, won many right. Tonys. Right. Um, so the costumes were great. Um, <laughs> the, the, and actually, the costumes were a case where it actually felt like it was, it was reinventing the original. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it wasn't you know, just sort of a slavish recreation or a total, like, camp... Uh, wink wink version of of the costumes it felt like its own thing I thought uh, the one thing you guys haven't mentioned is the talking se- the non-musical sequences mm-hmm. one of the problems that immediately you see is they're taking something that was campy to begin with and sort of laying on another Correct. layer of camp yes. and it's just like huh yes like the, that's where you get the real like what is the point of this that was one of my big problems with it 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 was it took itself so seriously in the camp vein that it became like even campier and it's like that but now you're just making it silly yeah now it's just silly it's not campy i i I have to go back to the audience interaction thing and i think that 
that sort of blunts how ridiculous the show is and makes you part of the joke. Whereas here, you're just watching this stuff happening in front of you. You're like, what is going on? Right. For I the think new that, audiences. But don't you think that that gets to the the core issue of they picked the wrong material for the TV treatment, whether live or taped? I, I don't I still know. Think live it would have been I better. think live it would have been better. Yeah. And I think they could have done it because they had like one major set. Right. Um, they had like a couple of like offsets. Well, because not doing it live, all it is is a movie remake that and, they're airing and, and, on TV. And the, and the lip syncing was like really painful. It was not good. At times. Which was, like, is terrible. Like how do you not get the lip syncing right? It's yeah. not like it's not live. You have time for post and all that. And to do this the right way. It's, there are so many problems with this this movie musical remake, um, I, I and I don't think, think it we, will do well. Can we can we talk about performances? Going oh back yeah, to yeah, this? yeah, I thought Adam Lambert was quite good as well, Eddie in the yes. Meatloaf role. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. he was probably the best one. Well, he has the best voice. So, if you were the the head of Fox, what and you saw this disaster, what's your next move? Do you go in a totally different direction? Do you say no? We're only going to do live musicals. How do you fix yes. this? Yes, I would go back to doing um, more mainstream live musicals, but doing it in an exciting way, right. like they did with Grease. I don't Correct. understand like why they couldn't just... I don't know what happened with this. They were like, again. okay, we we want to do another one, uh, but we want to roll it out before everyone else does, because usually these come out around the holidays or like in the winter. Mm. And they were like, okay, but we'll, so we'll just record it, and then we'll push it out. It'll be great. And I was like, no, just stick with the formula you had. It was working. Mm-hmm. Hairspray's up next in yes. December. I think that's going to be awesome. NBC. Mm-hmm. I think it's going to be great. Hairspray's a musical a lot of people love. Mm-hmm. The songs are wonderful. And I think the cast for that one is is pretty strong. Mm-hmm. Jennifer Hudson and yes. um, Ariana Grande. And Harvey Firestein and Har- reprising yeah. his Broadway, oh, I think his Tony winning role. So good. I'm very excited about that one. But this one, not so much. If you disagree after watching, tweet us. You know the handles. Um, we have to get into what is, I think, our most important segment every week. That Chris is going to love. Chris is going to be so he's in. he's a huge fan. Huge, I mean, watches regularly. Real Housewives of New Jersey. <laughs> This was the the uh, episode of the season where Joe Judice goes to prison, goes to college, goes to, college, goes to camp. <laughs> Let's not forget <laughs> he he goes to college. Um, Vicky, what were your thoughts? I know you didn't recap it this week. I didn't recap it because again, it was a Jewish holiday, and mm-hmm. Amy Kuparinsky ably filled in. You could find her recap on NJ dot com. And again, I really enjoy watching this show so much more when I don't have to recap it. Um, I liked, um, I kind of agree with Siggy. What? Yes. Well, first of all, can I just say that, like, Siggy's whole arc about her children, like, going away from her is something that I feel very keenly at the moment with my son also in his teens. You know I'm out. Okay? I'm not team Siggy But, however, right now. I did think that the pulling in of the Holocaust was a little heavy-handed. Everything <laughs> Siggy does is heavy-handed. I mean, it was like... Are you kidding me? It was like, it's like, it's like, do you really have to go to the Holocaust to make your children, like, thankful for your upbringing at this point? <laughs> um, you know, I mean... I mean, I, everybody knows I am Jewish. I am married to a rabbi. You know, I, I, I was just like, really? That's the only thing you have to go to? Yeah. So um, a little bit dramatic there. Um, um, going back to what she had to say about Joji is that even though, like, whatever you think about Joji at ICE, you know, it's like clearly nobody wants to see a father separated from his children and his wife for that long. It is still sad. And I have to agree. I, You oh, know how I feel about the Giannis. This is like... But, like, come on, when you saw Melania's face against the curtain and crying, I mean, you know. Not to get too political here. This is only a rich white people problem. I'm sorry. No one cares about, like, any other uh, non-white person going to jail, being away from their family. That's not how our country works. But whatever. Go ahead. Sorry. I, I, it touched me a little bit. Fine. Um, I did Criminals, appreciate. I did appreciate. No, can I say I did appreciate that this is the probably the closest we've ever come to Joe admitting what he did was wrong, which is when he said, you know, yeah, we've made mistakes. It's like, I like oh how my God, we, I like how he said we, we. We. I did pick up on that as we. well, and uh, Teresa did not yes. uh, disagree. Yeah. Um. So it's like, okay, bravo, Joe, and he actually did not seem drunk, even though he was chugging red wine. <laughs> like for once, he did not seem drunk. Um, but yeah, it was, it was, it was, I thought it was a little I sad. I thought the, the, the kiss outside of the SUV was mm. s- totally staged for the, 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 uh, news media gathered outside because they then got in the SUV together. I'm, I'm sorry, can I, I just say, like, what? I have to say one more thing about yeah. how, um, I think it was Dolores or somebody was talking about, oh, and there was a media circus. It's like, excuse 
Excuse me. There were like five. No, there were five people outside, but People Magazine was there, documented the whole thing. It was a media circus produced by the GNI. Did you you see how many cars were in their driveway? You can't call it it a media circus if you are the ringmaster. I think they had like a going away breakfast because there were a lot of people there. There were a lot of people there. There were a lot of people there. You know, Joe's family was there. I'm sure his mom was there. You know, his brother drove him. He was behind the wheel. Um, yeah, the media circus thing rankled me a bit. I was actually not outside the gates. I was looking for you. <laughs> so we decided, nah. I, I I would like to remind people at this point, speaking of looking for Vicky, that we're having a contest. <laughs> uh, I think I think it's going to be next week. Where if you oh, no, can, I actually think it's the week after next. I think it's just the going, build up to the fashion okay, show. Is so next week. at Melissa's fashion show, we all know Vicky was there, but she did not sign consent to be on camera. So no. if you can spot Vicky in the blur. Yeah. Screen grab it and tweet us. I'm the one wearing the comfortable shoes. How come you didn't sign consent? Because then I, I, I couldn't report on it. They say you can't you can't talk about what happens there, and that's ridiculous. Of course I was going to talk about what happened Obviously. there. Obviously. And um, what happened, Vicky? You don't know. You were eating like I was derbs. eating eggplant roll like, I mean, she like still doesn't know. Happened. She didn't sign the consent so she could report on it. Something major happens, and this one's over here the eating on derbs. The eggplant rollatini was excellent. Um, this is what we get. I did keeping those journals in standard yes. size. Yeah, <laughs> I did think my, we did pay for the tickets. We did pay for the ticket to the show. You're Just like, I'm real, getting my eggplant uh, yes, rollatini. I, I got my eggplant <laughs> rollatini. Um, I did have a like probably one of my favorite scenes. I think of all Real Housewives ever was the scene with Joe and Melissa and their kids in the backyard, mm-hmm. and um, they were talking about. Um, uh, I think um, Antonia was saying, uh, I don't know how it came up, but like, what happens if you disrespect your wife? And Antonia's brother's like, oh, I'll take an axe and I'll kill oh, him. Yeah. And Joe's like, yeah, Melissa's like, Joe! And Joe's like, no, kill him, kill him dead. I know. <laughs> it was, Look. I was laughing my, my butt off. The ridiculousness of this show. It was actually very did funny. We, did we see Jacqueline this week? I think I blocked yeah, out most she of this was, episode. She was spreading Nutella on a diaper. Oh, for no reason, right? Yeah, she was going to show because there's like a her baby. daughter how to change diapers, but they never actually did that. Right? Whatever. You know? Have you ever been to a baby shower? Yes. It wasn't even a baby oh, okay. shower. I know, <laughs> but I'm saying that's where they usually do the like gross food item in a diaper, and then you have to like taste it or smell it, and then figure out what it is. Uh, that not that didn't yeah. happen at the baby shower I went I'm to. Just saying. Jeez. Um. Mm. So overall, I'd say it was a pretty meh episode for me. How many more of these episodes Too many. are there? This there's season? the one leading up to the fashion show. There's the fashion show, and I think maybe there'll be an episode after that. We're going into November here. We are definitely yeah. going to members. They've, they've already have, shot the reunion. Yeah, and then you These already, seasons are longer than the prison. Oh my god! It's, it's, seriously, but it's, you know it's what? Five months of my life. But honestly, I think this is a short season for in for Real Housewives shows. Um, what are we episode like fourteen? Four, yeah, that's not that many. 14, Sometimes they go like more, twenty. They go twenty twenty one with the with the reunion shows. I, yeah, but this one I heard um, Andy Cohen say on his radio show only two reunion Thank episodes. God. But then the lost footage. Three. No, that you know what they haven't done that for the last couple of um, Real oh, Housewives, good. so oh. maybe we won't get that. Uh, Vicky, before we go for the week, yes. we have to remind everyone: The Walking Dead comes back this week. Yes, I spent the last six months catching up. She finally caught up. Finally so we're going to have an actual decent conversation. Yes, we about don't the have Walking to bring Dead. in a third party <laughs> because I will now know what's going on. So before we leave, who do you think? Negan killed. I don't think it's going. I can tell you who I don't think it's. I don't think it's going to be Rick. I don't think it's going to be Michonne. I don't think it's going to be any one of the very, very core cast. So I'm thinking maybe Abraham, um, Eugene. You know, I don't think it's going to be a woman, actually. I don't think it's a woman, but I do think it's. See, now I'm not going to remember any of their names. I do think it's my cute Asian guy. What's his name? Oh, it's not going to be Glenn. Oh, I think it's going to be Glenn. You think it's going to be Glenn? Totally, 100%. Put my money on it. They have, like, whipped out on every single major, like, possible death over the last couple of seasons. I just don't see them going for it now. But maybe. We'll see. Maybe. Walking but if dead. he's dead, he better be dead. Dead dead. Because, of course, everybody knows Zombie that actually dead. Glenn is the one who actually does get killed in the comic books. Which is not a surprise, because when Glenn was thought to be dead before but he's like but he under the dumpster until, whatever yeah yeah under the dumpster right so i mean it could be i guess out of, out of any of the core cast i guess it could be glad i think it's going to be john snow, john snow. <laughs> <laughs> no it's gonna be samuel Tarly. wrong show wrong show so we'll be watching the walking dead we'll talk about it next week also if you haven't watched vicky and everyone listening uh i'd like to recommend you watch insecure on hbo Oh, oh yeah, I've watched I this. Insecure, yeah. Isn't it good? The show is it's a delight. Good. I've it's watched funny, the first right? two episodes. Uh, really, really I good. I gave it a mini review. I called it winning. I agree. So, she, uh, especially the actress, Issa. Issa, Issa Rae. Is just, 
charming mm-hmm. and has a great presence and really funny writing. I, I completely mm-hmm. agree. And Larry Wilmore is one of the executive yes, producers. The producers. Um, so there was he, a, he there was a rap that, song his... in the first episode. Yes, with the P word. That was a hoot. It was really funny. And so much more enjoyable than Divorce. I'll say it again. Oh my gosh, absolutely. A a real comedy. I'm two episodes into Divorce, and I think, once again, you've underrated a television show. I find it very interesting. I watched four episodes. And she's out. I I also don't think it's a very good pairing with Insecure. Oh, no. Yeah, Yeah, they're not. Thomas Hayden Church is a national treasure. I will not disagree with you on that. I have no comments. (laughs) All right. So that's going to do it for us this week. Uh, A quick announcement here. We're probably going to change our name, people. (laughs) We're not going to be TV Hangover anymore. We have some. We're in the 10-step program. Yeah, we're (laughs) going to. We have. uh, some different names that we're we're banding about here, and next week we we could be under a different moniker. So make sure you look out. We'll let you guys know on Twitter. Are listeners allowed to have feedback? If you have a suggestion, if you've listened to the podcast this long, I mean we're forty four minutes in, and you have suggestions for a new name, tweet them to us at our current Twitter handle at TV Hangover Show. Or at E underscore meds and at Vicky High, V-I-C-K-I-H-Y, uh, and we will give them a consideration. But until next time, with whatever name we come up with, it's Aaron and Vicky. <laughs> <laughs>